tell us a bit more then about this latest guidance from Israel to the United Nations about moving their staff. Do we know how many people are there and what has the UN response been? Yeah, so let's put, put first into the context kind of where we are more broadly speaking. Israel has mobilized 350,000 soldiers um, from the reserves. There are apparently more than 300,000 Israeli soldiers near the Gaza border right now. The Israeli Defense Forces have said that there has not yet been a political decision made as to whether or not to invade um, Gaza. However, all of the ingredients seem to be assembling for that possibility, and the military itself has said it is prepared for that. Now, we've got this evacuation order. Israeli's military told the United Nations operating in Gaza to evacuate its staff and also that the Palestinians living in the north of, of Gaza need to move to the south in the next 24 hours. Now we're talking about an area that includes more than a million people and the United Nations has said that the UN considers it impossible for such a movement to take place without devastating humanitarian consequences. The United Nations strongly appeals for such order if confirmed to be rescinded avoiding what could transform what is already a tragedy into a calamitous situation. Um, and that calamitous situation is more than 1,500 people that have um, already died in Gaza um, from the bombs. More than 6,000 bombs have been dropped. The infrastructure is completely devastated. Water, electricity, food, um, uh, internet. Um, and there, that is in response, of course, to the attacks on Saturday. More than 5,000 bombs have been dropped on Israel. That's what, the, according to the Israeli Defense um, Forces. And there is an, an, a push to establish a humanitarian corridor with Gaza, one that is in part led by Egypt. Egypt, though, has also said it, would, it wants the Gazans to stay in their territory. So if we are displacing one million people, we are talking about moving almost 50 percent of the Gazan mm -hmm. population into about 50 percent of the territory and already what is one of the most densely populated places in the world. Yeah. We're looking at live images coming through from Gaza at this very moment. Uh, the U.S. Secretary of State, Antony Blinken, he visited Israel. He also extended his regional tour to add a few other Gulf countries. What's on the agenda? And what else have you seen? Yeah, so there are a lot of diplomats that are going to be shuttling around the Middle East and coming into um, Tel Aviv today. So just a word on Blinken yesterday here in Tel Aviv, really giving his unwavering support um, to Israel from the United States. However, there was also a second message in there in, 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 the, in the presser that he gave saying that basically how Israel goes about this and um, taking down Hamas um, is very important. He said that that's why it's so important to take every possible precaution to avoid harming citizens and civilians. That's why we mourn the loss of every innocent life citizens of every faith, every nationality who have been killed. And so the question is how Israel is going to continue this if they do in fact go into Gaza. You know, obviously this is a military that is technologically far more advanced. They relinquish some of those advantages if they go into an urban situation. Um, and as you say, Blinken will go to Saudi Arabia, the UAE, Egypt, uh, Qatar. And today we expect Ursula von der Leyen to come here to Tel Aviv, the U.S. Defense Secretary as well, and the foreign ministers from Germany, um, Italy, and from the EU Parliament. And we should also mentioned that Hamas has called for a day of rage globally, protests, um, and so the Israeli government has warned all mm -hmm. Jews and Israelis to stay um, far away from any of those.